Adam Dariawash, Shaithya Wazraka, Shaithya Shaithyanum, Shaithya Parse, Shaithya Dachyunum. Most historical sources agree that between Cambyses' death and the ascension of Darius to the Achaemenid throne, there sat an usurper. Either this person was Bardaya, also known as Smyrtus, a brother of Cambyses, or it was Gamauda, a Zoroastrian priest impersonating the brother. This is an absolutely fascinating period of time. There's much speculation and a variety of possibilities. However, I want to ensure that we utilize factual historical evidence when possible. Wherever the truth lies with regards to who the usurper was and his period of time on the throne, we pick up our series on the Achaemenid Empire with Darius's ascension. Darius was crowned the new King of Kings in Pasargadi, but he would hold his court in the city of Ecbatana. Darius spent over a year quelling rebellions throughout the empire. We know this thanks to Darius' own account on what is known as the Behistun inscriptions. The inscription located on Mount Behistun contains text in three languages, Old Persian, Elamite, and Babylonian, which starts with Darius providing an autobiographical account of his lineage and that of the empire, and ends with details on his quelling of the rebellions that arose during his first year on the throne, saying, These nine kings did I capture in these wars. As to these provinces which revolted, lies made them revolt, so that they deceived the people. Then Ahura Mazda delivered them into my hand, and I did unto them according to my will. You, who shall be king hereafter, protect yourself vigorously from lies, Punish the liars well, if thus you shall think, may my country be secure. We know that a small, loyal group of nobles assisted Darius with his ascension. One of these, Intifernes, was killed by Darius with the accusation leveled against him of intended rebellion. The other nobles who had helped place Darius on the throne disavowed any connection with Intifernes. While Darius spent most of his first year in an almost constant state of reactive conflict, he would introduce much reform and advancement into the empire over the duration of his reign. The idea of dividing the empire into provinces and placing governors called satraps to rule them was something Cyrus and others in the region had done before Darius, with each satrap essentially serving as viceroy to the king and given a substantial level of autonomy. However, Darius gave the satraps a definitive structure and increased their number to 36. He also unified the coinage of the empire under a single system. In addition to building roads and introducing standard weights and measures, which greatly assisted commerce throughout the empire. The initial revolt he put down was an uprising in Babylon, a revolt initiated and led by Nebuchadnezzar III who took advantage of a local noble, Otanese, who had removed his forces to assist Darius. Darius felt betrayed that the people of Babylon supported Nebuchadnezzar, and he put the city to siege. The city remained resilient for 18 months, even mocking Darius during the siege with a taunt that he would only take the city when mules have foals. According to legend, Darius finally gained access to the city when a high-ranking soldier of his had a mule who foaled. Darius sent Zopyrus into Babylon, having him pose as a deserter. Zopyrus was able to gain the trust of the Babylonians and stealthily open the city gates, allowing Darius and his troops entrance into the city. Once inside, the city was taken quickly and Nebuchadnezzar was put to death. As with this rebellion, Darius' enemies consistently took advantage of power vacuums to initiate their revolts. Another such rebellion that occurred while Darius had Babylon under siege occurred when the Scythians took advantage and attacked. Darius, having addressed the Babylon revolt, first put down revolts in Elam and Assyria before finally moving on to the Scythians. As he neared, they fled the province, 
heading back towards their lands near the Black Sea. In pursuit of them, he crossed the Black Sea at the Bosphorus Strait, where present-day Istanbul sits, using a bridge of boats. The Scythians employed hit-and-run guerrilla tactics against the Persians. This frustrated Darius, and he took the unusual step of writing the Scythian leader to either fight or surrender. While the Scythians refused to surrender, Darius would ultimately be victorious as the Scythians would employ scorched earth tactics in addition to the hit and run. This had the result of damaging their own lands and angering their allies, whose lands he employed these tactics in. As Darius moved eastwards, the attrition rate of his forces could not be overlooked. Low on supplies, troops, and morale, Darius stopped on the banks of the Orus where he would build eight great forts that were spaced roughly 13 kilometers apart from each other and headed back towards Thrace. While not conquered in their entirety, Darius was able to instill respect in the Scythians, enough so they would not trouble the Persians again for some time. With the rebellions quelled, Darius embarked on a campaign to Egypt, where he defeated the armies of a self-proclaimed pharaoh by the name of Petubastus. Petubastus had taken advantage during the period of instability just before and during the first year of Darius's rule. Darius re-secured the Egyptian lands that Cambyses had conquered. In 516 BCE, Darius turned his attention towards the Indus Valley. He first passed through Arya and Bactria, and then eastward into present-day Afghanistan and Taxila in present-day Pakistan, which lies east of the Indus River. He spent that winter in the Gandhara region before campaigning south to Karachi. Once in Karachi, he sent a Greek retainer by the name of Skylax of Karyanda to explore the Indian Ocean south of Karachi, west to Suez. Darius then marched through the Bolan Pass, and then Arcosia and Drangia, finally back to Persia. The empire had encompassed the western shores of Turkey. At that time, the population there was predominantly Greek. Since Cyrus had taken control of the area in 540 BCE, the satraps ruled those lands from Sardis on behalf of the emperor, appointing local rulers to provide local government on their behalf. Some of these men would be cruel tyrants. In 499 BCE, one such tyrant by the name of Aristagoras from Milesia launched an attack with the Persian satrap Artaphernes to conquer Naxos. However, the mission was a complete and utter failure. Sensing his imminent overthrow as a tyrant, Aristagoras chose instead to incite the whole of Ionia into rebellion against Darius. In 498 BCE, with the support of troops and ships from Athens and Eretria, the Ionians marched on Sardis and razed it. Darius sent Mardonius, one of his leading military commanders, to crush the uprising. Mardonius conquered Macedonia in 492, but allowed them to retain the autonomy that they had enjoyed since the 6th century. In 490, Darius assembled another army, this time consisting of 20,000 men under his admiral Datis and nephew Artaphernes. They captured Eretria and marched on to Marathon. Just outside of Marathon, the Persian forces met a heavily armed Athenian army consisting of 9,000 men who were supported by 600 Plataeans and 10,000 lightly armed soldiers led by Miltiades. However, the Persians would be defeated, ending the first Persian invasion of Greece. Darius in 486 was preparing for a second invasion that he would command himself when he died. The task would be left to his son Xerxes. Darius was embalmed and entombed in a rock-cut tomb that he had built for himself several years earlier. In addition to the reforms, Darius would be remembered for his great construction projects, many of these done outside of the capital in the far reaches of the empire. 
One such project linked the Nile to the Red Sea. Also, numerous temples were built for religions other than his Zoroastrian faith. What was unique about these projects was the inclusion of workers from all regions of the empire, which again enhanced the economies of the empire outside of the capital. This ends part three of the Persia Rises series. In part four, we take a look at Darius's son, Xerxes.